Om Rapa Sandi, 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 Om Rapa Sandi. Hello. Hello. Good evening, Michelle. Good evening. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Oh, very good. Very good. Okay. Okay. Very good. Okay. So now the today I thought to talk the remaining the uh, remaining points of the six Narupa Yoga. So last time, as we talked about the four Narupa Yoga. Now I will talk about the remaining two among the six Narupa Yoga. So now the the fifth one, fifth one is a uh, called uh, uh, fifth one is a uh, called fifth, uh, fifth is the isn't it the, did I talk about the consciousness transference or not yet? No. We did a. Uh, what do we do? Okay. What do we talk then? Um, okay. okay. I will make. Okay. Uh, okay. I'll come to the. Okay. So uh, I have not spoke about the consciousness transference, isn't it? Okay. So now. Okay. Think, okay. Okay, now the, the six Narupa Yogas, now the now the remaining parts, okay, remaining parts, okay. Now uh, today, uh, mm, the remaining parts, okay, mm, I will mm, make more easier the six Narupa Yogas. So one is called the mm, inner heat or psychic heat, practice of the inner heat or psychic heat, practice of the dream, and uh, practice of the... Uh, 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 illusory body, illusory body, practice of the illusory body. Now that it comes the fourth comes the practice of the consciousness transference and the practice of, of the practice of the state of the union and the practice of the uh, practice of the uh, <clears throat> entering in the corpse. Okay, there are the six Yogas. Okay, I will repeat it again. Okay, six. The practice of inner heat or practice of the uh, psychic heat. Okay, psychic heat. Psychic heat or inner heat, number one. And the practice of the dream and the <clears throat> practice of the illu illusory body. Uh, practice of the consciousness transference. Practice of the state of uh, practice of the union of bliss or practice of the union or state of union, whatever you can call it, practice of state of union and the practice of entering into corpse. I mean the dead body, okay. Corpse, okay. They're the six Narupa Yogas. Now the now the today that the, I will come if I don't if I last time if I'm not covered that uh, co uh, consciousness transfer and practice now come now we yeah. you did that's the one that you did cover on uh, last time, the fourth one, the the uh, consciousness transfer. When you, you die and, and where do you go after you die? I see. I just cover maybe half. Okay. Hello. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I talk about the process of the death. Am I right? Okay. Okay. So now, okay. Now that, okay, now the practice that has come to in the uh, practice of the consciousness transfer is first, as I told you last time, we have to understand the death process. Now the once you know that you're dying, the death, you're going to die. 
Okay, you are dying. That time, what you have to do is that you have to transfer the, your consciousness, transferring the self consciousness to to the Buddha's pure land, Buddha's pure land. That the consciousness transference, practice of the consciousness transference is called that. So, I think I told you last time that uh, in the one time in the one time in the in the Oregon when I was on, I had. In the one radio show, they asked me the question that uh, they told me that you are the eighth Kasurubhiche, so you are the reincarnation. So the person told he want to reborn and the take uh, rebirth in the Italy. Can I guide him that how he can born in Italy in his next life? <laughs> yeah. So that the same thing like the, here the, in the practice of the consciousness transfer, it teaches. It is a practice that how we can transfer the, our consciousness to the Buddha's pure land. For that, for that, what you have to do is that you have to carry on the practice. Normally that practice takes a one week, one week to practice. And the person, when you succeed in that practice, when you person that succeeded at that practice, what happened is that, uh, I think you have seen some, like in the YouTube, some of the people, they're the different kind of the signs comes to when the person succeed that the practice of the consciousness transfer. Number one, that the, you can put the straw, you no, know, the straw into the person's hat, and the person, the straw means I mean the not exactly the plastic straw. Okay, that is the normally we used to call the kusha grass. Kusha grass. I'm not. I don't know how to translate that in English. The kusha grass is uh, one kind of the grass. The root is a looks. It the root of the that grass looks like a straw very thin straw and uh, we can put that straw into the person hat and uh, it will not fall down that is the one kind of the sign and another thing is that the person uh, when we're practicing and uh, what happened is that the, the person will uh, person will have the liquids or the some kind so it may come out from the hat some some with the students that the, when their practices in the within was sometimes a lots of the liquids will come out. It's just like a, you are taking the shower. No, when you after the taking the shower, when you have the here, no, so they will have lots of the waters on your hand. No, some kind of like this happens, and the, some student might have the very strong vomit sensation and they will vomit a lot. So this is the practice for the one week practice of consciousness transference. So I will give you the one very small. Uh, I'll, uh, I will not give you, I will let you do the one small, I mean, the small, I mean, the experiment. What you have to do is, uh, can you touch on your hat? Can you touch on your hat and can you just try to find it, the point in the, your head a little bit like this way? Uh, how to say the little bit shallow or the, what, how do you call it? Shallow or? A little depression. A depression. Yeah. The pressure or some, can you find it here at the center of the hat? So maybe some, that's a very interesting thing. That some people, it's not on the center. Maybe a little bit right, a little bit left. Can you find it? Okay. Don't press too hard. A little bit hard. This is a very strong pressure point on your heart. Very strong. That is a very strong pressure point. And the one thing is that the, if you look at the people, natural death, after the people, when the medical hospital, they declared that death, after 30 to the 40 minutes, after 30 to the 40 minutes, normally people, there's some liquids will come from the, this part of the body. You, you can observe with the people who are natural death, okay, natural death. This is comes from that part, that part, the liquid, some liquids will come from that part. Now the one other side, this is the one very important the pressure point. Some, I think that you may experience that when you are meditating, very meditate or meditate, sometimes you may feel the, some of the heat on that point, heat. And sometimes when you are very low, when you are very low or the mentally you feel very low, you may observe, you may feel very heaviness on the, that point. So I will tell you the one thing, normally people laugh, normally people laugh, they always look upwards, 99%. They won't laugh like looking downwards, they won't laugh. Mostly they look upward and they will laugh. Whenever you look, whenever you laugh, whenever you're happy and when you laugh, you will look upwards. Whenever you feel pressure, whenever you have a thinking something, 
very deeply or when you are you're having the mental, you have a pressure, you will look downwards. That is a, some biological response, no? Biological response. Even the disinter uh, I mean, even the dog is exactly the same. When dog is happy, it will look more upwards. When dog is sad, it will look downwards. Even the dog. So this is the some. What I'm trying to say is that a pressure point, no? So when you are having a lot of the, I mean, the negative, a lot of the pressures inside in your heart, it will come down. You you will look downwards. When you are happy, when you release a lot of the pressures of the, and when you are happy, when you laugh, you will look upwards. Rarely, very rarely, some people laugh when they look down and laugh very rare. Maybe it might be one, maybe only zero, 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 point one. <laughs> but most ninety nine point nine nine number people will when they look, they will look upwards. You know, they will laugh. No? Hmm? Yeah. Anyway, so the okay, so. So what I'm saying is that now here we come to the point. Now what I'm saying is that the, when you are practicing the consciousness transference, that is the that is the medium is the way you have to transfer the, your consciousness. When the persons die, never the, when the natural death, the consciousness leave the body. When the consciousness leave the body, we have to transfer the, our consciousness through the, our crown. We call that the crown chakra, through the crown chakra. When the consciousness leaves the body through the crown chakra, then the will will take the better rebirth. Better rebirth. That is the no. Yeah, that is a chakra. So this is the here's the one important chakra called the crown chakra. <clears throat> so this is the crown chakra when you meditate or the when you meditate, when you have to receive the positive energy, mostly you have to receive through the your crown chakra. Crown chakra receiving. So that's why when you meditate like a Buddha Sakyamuni or the Koinam Buddha, uh, sorry, the Buddha Sakyamuni or the Avalokiteshvara Buddha or the Manjushiri Buddha, whatever you just, just visualize the white lights coming from the, your hand and the entering into your body white light that you have to receive through it. Now here, what you that's why the, you can receive a lot of the positive energy. Now here, what you can do is you can do the one experiment. You can do the one experiment, okay? That you can do with your dog or your family members or the, you can do with a flower. What you do is you just visualize that the white lights coming from the Buddha and the entering your body from the your crown and the, you just put your hand, don't touch the flower, don't touch the, that person or your pet. Just keep nearby and think that the white light is going through the, your white and you are transferring white light. You use your body as a medium medium to receive the white i mean the energy from white or blessing energy from the buddha and the, you just try to transfer that toward the someone towards someone or the, you can just visualize that the, your white lights comes from the buddha entering your body through your crown and the, now the white light is going throughout the, your hand and the palm and the, dissolving into the plant or the whatever you can try that okay just do like an experiment okay experiment I did with the several experiments. I asked my student to do it. The result is within a month. It's a very interesting. Always get very interesting. You will just get the two flower. Okay, two flower pot. Keep it the same place and uh, uh, give the water, same water, same amount of the water. And the, okay, but one one flower pot don't do like this healing or the whatever blessing. Okay, one flower just do the healing and blessing. In the within of the month, you will see the big difference that happens. I mean, the few times this happened with my students. So what I'm saying is that this is something like that. So that's why the what I'm saying, the blessings or the positive energy, that is the main point that of you interest to your body from your crown, and that you can transfer it through your palm. That you can do it for your palm, you can transfer it. So that's why you can see that some of the Buddhas, the posture, no? they will come like this posture. No? So transferring the blessing or transferring the positive energy through the Buddhist palm. No? So, yeah. Okay, this is the... Now, now the consciousness transfer and practice. That the consciousness transfer and practice is that what you are learning is that the, how we can transfer the, our consciousness at this, and when we are dying and the transferring the consciousness from our body to and the body to the Buddhist pure land. Okay? Normally, that practice, it, you have to practice at least one week daily to six to eight hours for one week okay now how to practice that that i will not talk today okay 
when you're really very serious to do it, then we will do that, okay? When, but uh, because sometimes I know that, but then you might get a lot of the, this and that informations in the in the Google. No? Sometimes these informations are they are just collecting collected a lot of the different information they put that in the Google. So so that's what my point is that's why if you this practice and normally we have to do the like a retreat, no one week retreat. And uh, when I introduce that I should be there because sometimes it can go a little bit wrong. So I have to it is something like that. No when you take the medicine sometimes you might get a reaction. No. So when you get reaction I have to again the uh give you another dose no so same thing like that so this is practice okay consciousness transference practice is normal it will take one week one week practice and the, at that the main the consciousness transparent practice it teaches us that uh, how we can transfer the, our consciousness at the time of the death from this world or this realm to the buddha's the pure land okay this is that okay so after the when you are practice of one week, the how we will know that you succeeded not as I told you. There are lots of the liquid might come from the, your body, or you might have a vomiting, <clears throat> or sometimes the many cases it happens like a person when they practice no, they will feel like a very different like a sometimes the person they, it depends very much on the person the bodies the immune system. Some few students feel like or suddenly feel like a, something is opening from your crown chakra very hollow. They can feel a very strong the wind movements, wind entering the body, and then the winds going out of the your crown. You know, they will feel like that. Right. This is the all the I mean the signs that the, now you succeed. Now you can transfer the, your consciousness at the state of the death. At the time of the di death, you can transfer the, your consciousness. Okay. So this is the practice of the uh, practice of. Mm, Consciousness transparency, okay. Consciousness done. Normally, it will take the weeks, okay. Weeks and uh, yeah, do yeah. We some cases in with the I when I have a question. Right? Yeah, sure. You want to take a question? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Okay. Thanks, Connor. Um, my question is when we're when we try and do the meditation to transfer the power for our homework to to like um transfer the energy to another person. How long should mm -hmm. we meditate, and then how long? after we meditate do we have to transfer okay that is uh you know maybe one minute 30 seconds like that you're talking about the real the transfer. yeah, yeah very, okay very okay and then but how the long do we yeah Sorry, go ahead yeah <laughs> most important thing is when you're transferring in the most important is compassion is very sure. important sure compassion sure. compassion to that okay Okay. Because sometimes when you are more compassion, what will happen is more compassion, your energy will be much more stronger, much more effective. Okay. Okay. But okay. the one thing is, I will just little bit of uh, this is little bit of the um, I don't know whether it's a little bit of the complicated or it's the funny that the, when you are transferring the positive energy, the plant, you cannot practice the compassion. Okay. Because the plant, that from Buddhism point of view, they don't have the consciousness. Okay. They might have a life. Life and consciousness is very different from Buddhist perspective, okay? So plant is not a compassion, okay? But they, when you do the sentient beings with the compassion, okay? Hmm? One more question. How long yes. should you meditate to 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 um, get the... the um... no, just first, you, okay, you can do like a 10, 15 seconds. First you meditate to receive the blessings mm -hmm. from Buddha. In, yeah, then 10, 15 seconds, then you oh. just... Transfer the your that I mean the oh. uh, inner. This is the this is the one step you can do. Okay. Second step you can do like that. You just use your body as a channel. Just think that the blessing is coming from the Buddha. White light entering your body. Then you are transferring that that white light is going not a transfer going out of your hand. Okay. First, you try to do with the experiment with the plant. Bring the two plants, same plant, keep it in the same place and put the same amount of the water, everything same. But one plant, you do that. Okay, just keep the, your hand near by the plant at the, every day. You do just a practice 10, 15 seconds, a few minutes. Then see the one minute later what makes the difference. Back to then. <laughs> okay. Mm. Yeah, okay, then you can do with your family members or the animal dogs and the, your pets. No, you can do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so so in the this very interesting thing is that uh, in the Thai, there is one tradition in the Thailand. 
So there is a uh, one monastery. They have the sometimes they raise the, there is a tiger farm, no tiger farm, and the way that this monastery they normally Thai Thailand the poacher, no? the, what you call the poacher, isn't it? Animal poacher, hunter, no? what you call the poacher, no? You sometimes they kill the tigers and the lap there the baby, no? So orphan tiger, so they raise like this tiger, so. To control the tiger, sometimes the monk used to meditate and try to he heal that, to bring the more energy or the blast with the energy to calm the tiger. <laughs> they use that. Yeah, anyway, so you can try with the numbs and you can try with the plant, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now the one, okay, now the consciousness transference, okay, that practice for the, that will be the one week practice, okay? One week practice and uh, then. <clears throat> Mm, mm, that is uh, yeah so something like now the go now i will go back to the point of the inner uh, the, the inner heat practice normally inner heat practice that will take the months maybe three months to get the result of the to succeed in the, the energy i mean sorry the inner heat no the first the practice the, it may take the three months because the thing is that the, the, that is succeed or not that the whether student have to meditate and really in the very cold temperature and the see that the, how we, they can uh, bring the heat inside of their body. One time, I mean, the, in the Taiwan, I introduced the meditation. And then I told the student, really, now we have to try that whether you have succeed. So what I told is that the, we will put the lots of the air condition very, very, I mean, the, Mm, very strong air condition and while you are meditate and the, what you have to do so you can wear the very thin I mean the cloth plus that what I told them normally that is an ancient time what they do is that they ancient time they meditate in a high mountain and the cold air uh, cold area in the very high mountain and the meditator have to meditate especially the meditator who meditate on the inner heat they meditate and uh, the master, they will soak the cloth, you know, like this cloth into the water and that they have to wrap, isn't it? Wrap with the, that wet cloth or they will put the wet cloth on the meditator. So they they have to, what they have to do is that they have to, yeah, so what they have to do is that then they have to dry that cloth, dry the cloth. So when I told them the student in the, I want, I, I, I have to do like that. Everyone gets scared and no one came forward to do that experiment. <laughs> so, anyway, so, so this is the, I mean, it may take the three months, but uh, this is a process. So last time I just got to introduce, no? So again, the teaching, it will have to take, they, in, in, this, in the inner hip practice, they are the seven steps, seven steps. And the, uh, this is first teaching, it will take the, one week to teach the inner heat. It's seven step and every day, normally we do the every day, we will teach the first step, second step, third step, fourth step. Then again, you have to meditate maybe four to five hours for meditate, okay? That is the normally how you have to do very practical way, okay? Because last time, but this time I'm just telling you more the theoretical, okay? Like when you look at the science, well, first they will have the theory of the science, then you have to go to laboratory to do the experiment, no? So now I'm just giving the theory, okay? Now the later future will go to the laboratory, okay? Going to the laboratory is a little bit more complicated. <laughs> Sometimes you may burn something and this and that happens in the laboratory, no normal. Okay, so this is the, okay? Uh, this is normally it take like that. Now the dream yoga, I think that I teach last time, not dream yoga. So dream yoga, I told yeah, teach the some that dream yoga. No? So that is the practice how you can carry it. The most difficult is the dream yoga. Because dream yoga, then you have no control at all. You cannot control. Dream yoga is some state in that you have to practice in the dream. And they, plus you have to remember that you are dreaming. That is the most difficult practice. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Now the consciousness transference. Okay. We talk about the consciousness transference. Now we'll go to the fifth one. The consciousness. Okay. Think, oh, sorry. Uh, inner heat practice, it may take the three months to get the success. Okay. At least three months inner heat practice. Okay. Then the uh, then we talk about the clear light consciousness. No clear light consciousness. This is a day. There is a no. And that depends very much on the student. Some student can practice very well in the within a very short time, and some might not. 
And the illusory body practice is a very, very high practice. It may first we have to success the all other practice, then only we can success that of the illusory body practice. Okay. The and the practice of the consciousness transference within a one week you can succeed, okay. Within a one week. If it's not one week, at maximum two weeks, definitely you will get success, okay? So, but at least you have to spend six to eight hours the daily, okay? That is that, okay? So, yeah, now, now we'll come to the practice. Uh, now the fifth, we'll talk of the practice of the state of union, okay? State of the human and practice is something like that, the, as I mentioned, when the person is generating the clay light consciousness, when you're meditating and the, suddenly the person will feel a very, very joyful of the bliss, Sometimes the normally the person who generate the joy and the please or that, what happens is they will generate the attachment. So in this practice, not to generate the attachment toward the bliss or the joy, just to use that happiness or the joy or the bliss to realize the emptiness. That called the practice of the state of the unit. Normally when you are very happy or the when what it is something like a transforming the your emotion into the practice, okay? When you feel very happy and the joy, you will get attached to it. When you feel very unhappy, you will generate the anger. So that is, a, it is a very simple that when you, are, uh, when you are having, when you are feeling a very good, so when you are having the good food or the, when your food tastes good, what happens? You will generate the attachment toward that food. So this is the two things. First, the happiness or joy, then the attachment. In the fifth, the practice of the state of the union, what they are teaching us, the first, you just enjoy that the good food, but don't generate the attachment. Just enjoy that, use that happiness or joy, that, that your emotion into the practice. And the, sometimes when someone, uh, someone tells you the very, I mean, the negative words or someone, once, once you get hurt, what will happen? Once you get hurt, then immediately you will generate the negative emotion, anger, or like that, no? So that here, this teaching, it also, when you get hurt, you get hurt. Now, the not to generate the anger, not to generate the negative emotion. Use that the hurt toward the practice. When you get the hurt, then you can practice like uh, giving and taking. When you get hurt, think that the whoever get hurt like me, whoever get hurts like me, may they not suffer. All the negative karmas, of the person who get hurt may fall upon me. May no one suffer like me get hurt. Like that way. It is something like a something like a transferring, no? Transferring the misfortune into the practice. Okay. That is the one very important. Into day-to-day -day life. Not the day-to-day -day life, we have to face a lot of the I mean the misfortune. I mean the misfortune and the I should say that a lot of the day, time in the day-to-day -day life will have a challenging, you know, a lot of challenges and a lot of the, some difficulties we will face it. But that time we have to use this, we have to use that state or the use that misfortune, transform that misfortune into the practice of the Dharma. So then the even then they are saying the great practitioner, they say the for me the all the misfortunes are blessing. So one great practitioner say that. Because when you can practice that, then the misfortune or the whatever happens to you, it will not, you will not get hurt. You will not get hurt and you will not get sad at all. So this is happens. Yeah. That can happen when you keep on the practice, no? Keep on the practice. Yeah. So because I remember the one the one thing that the one occasion that the uh, I was in the one airport, in the Dao, India on airport. Airport was while I'm standing, we are standing on the cube. Suddenly, one guy came, just, just jump in front of the us. He's not standing in the cube properly. So, person who was standing back, he really got freak out and uh, shouting, little bit unhappy, and he was shouting. So, I told him that uh, now we have to practice the patient. So that gentleman told me, I don't have such a power like you to practice the patient. <laughs> But this is this is something like that. Uh, you can learn it, no? So it, even that day, he don't have it. But if you learn, definitely he can he can gain that power to practice the patient, no? So that's why the, what I'm saying is that the, right now, the, up till now, when something the misfortune or the something happened at which we don't like it, immediately what will happen is we'll get unhappy, we'll get angry. That is uh, what happens, no? That is happened. 
Now, in this practice, when you now when you start the practice, when you get hurt, not to generate the anger and the trying to practice that the transform that misinchu uh, misfortune into the dharma practice. If you do like that one time, two time, three times, then the lots of whatever the misfortune, whatever the I mean the things happens surrounding you which you don't like at all, you will not get upset at all. So normally we get upset. Normally we get hurt because the things happens that which you don't like it. So that is the one reason. So that's why, yeah. So that's the thing, yeah. So that's why that, yeah. I think that you have that experience. Some people, when they are very close, I mean, the friends or the partners or whatever, sometimes when the things are not going well, one thing comes into your mind that, oh, your partners or your friends change a lot, no? <laughs> because it is change a lot, means that person has changed into that what you don't like. The person, so that's why you always, the people will complain that, yeah, he or she changed a lot, no? So actually, the, everything changes, impermanent, no? Everything changes, no? You, yours, we are changing, others are changing, everything's are changing, no? So changing, but the things that the, how the person have changed that you don't accept, you cannot accept it, so you don't like it. So that's why the, that's why the sometimes you get very much hurt. No? So this is the one thing. Second thing is when you lose someone in your life, that's also very hurtful. No? I really understand that when you lose someone in the life, very I mean the, that is hurtful. So like this state, so you can practice the dharma. No, when you lose someone, not only you lose, no, everyone have lost, and then you can practice the whoever lost like me, your whoever lost like me, whoever lost like me, me, uh, whoever lost like me, may all these peoples, whoever lost, may they are the bad karma, or the may they are suffering, may fall upon me. You can think and practice like that, okay? So it is very helpful, very helpful. So this is the, now here comes the fifth practice, no? Uh, state of the union. State of the union means a joy and the practice to union. You have to get a joy and the practice union. Normally, they are the very interesting thing in the Ravada. When you are so happy, you will lose the Dharma practice. When you are so sad, you will lose the Dharma practice. No? When a person is so happy, they will forget the Dharma practice. When a person is so sad, again, they will forget the Dharma practice. So, so now here it is that even you are so happy, you, can, you should carry on the Dharma practice. You are, when you are so sad, even you have to carry the Dharma practice. So that's why it will be neutralized, no? neutralized. So sometimes the emotions, you know, not, they, they, when you are so happy, you cannot fall asleep. When you are so sad or unhappy, again, you cannot fall asleep. Sometimes, sometimes what happening is our emotion is really fluctuating very high up and down very fast. No? So that's why then neutralizing. Okay, so that is the, what you have to do, neutralize the emotion. Okay, okay. Thank you. Okay, now today we'll stop with the first Narubha Yoga. If you have any question, I will leave a few minutes for the question and answer sessions. Yeah. Rinpoche, in, in the six yogas, uh, uh, do, is it still, is it called poa practice in the six yogas? Uh, what? Is the transference practice in the six yogas called poa? As like it is in other traditions, so or is it is called a, the Poa is a consciousness transference. Poa, okay. The six yoga is uh, called the Tongju. Tongju means uh, entering into the corpse. That is a completely lost tradition. Now we don't have that tradition. Practice and uh, no one knows that how to do that. Now it is a lost. Only we have the theory. Practically, don't know anyone knows know how to do that. Yeah. Yeah, any other questions? Okay. If you don't have, then we'll stop here. So last time I gave you the homework and I'm going through it, okay? I'm reading through it, it's that, uh, that uh, what the homework, okay? Then I will come back about that, okay? And then normally, seems like a very good, everyone who wrote the homeworks, yeah, very good, yeah, very nice, yeah. So what, do, I mean the, about the homework, if you are going to die, no? So very good and the nice, and this is the, thought like a very positive thoughts, no? So that will be very helpful, the positive thoughts. But so when you're dying, no? Most important thing is that when you're at the death state, what you need is very strong positive thoughts or a positive belief that you should need that. That's a very important. 
Then the you then the at the time of the death you will feel the less pain and the less difficulties. So once you don't have the positive belief at the state of the dying, no, then it's a very difficult. Then you will complain a lot plus complain. Then you will feel the fear. Then you will feel the regret, sadness. All the negative emotion will come that time. Then the very difficult to challenge. Right now, when you get fear, you won't get the worry. You know? When you worry and the fear and the if one time all the negative emotions comes together, it's very difficult to handle. You know? So at the state of the death, if you don't have any positive belief, then the fear, worry, regret, and the anger all comes together. So that's why very difficult time for the human life. You know? So yeah. So that's why they are saying very nice saying that the, when you are born, when you are born, where everyone, you know, when you are born. You are you are born with a crying, no? You cry, but surrounding all this mind, no? When you are born, you are crying, but the surrounding when you are born, the surrounding or your people who are you will smiling, no? When you die, when does all the surroundings cry? But you should smile, no? You should <laughs> smile and you should learn to smile and to die with the smiling. Okay, maybe surrounding might be crying, no? So that is very. When we are born, we are born with the crying. When was all the surrounding might be smiling, no? So when you die, all the surrounding might be crying, but you should learn to smile at the time. So when you have very positive belief and the joy and happiness, then you will have that, no? So there is a very uh, Katamba. There is one great master saying the Chekawa. He is a great master. So at the state of the dying, he said that he had the one wish. He had the one wish that he wanted born in the house. To help the help beings, so he said that he was born in hell. Now he thinks that he was not going to be born in the hell. That is a very strong message. So person like that kind of the thought, even they are born in the hell, they will enjoy the hell because they have the no regret and they have no selfishness, no thought. So this is the something that we can learn. No? So yeah, okay. Thank you, thank you so much. Okay, then we'll see you later. Okay, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Rinpoche. Thank you, Rinpoche.